AICGS is very pleased to have you here today, uh, Dr. Norbert uh, Rutkin. And um, we know that you've just uh, stepped up to be chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, which is uh, for the United States a very important uh, position. I know previously you were Minister of the Environment, uh, and uh, we really look forward to having uh, that exchange with you now over the next uh, years. Um, I um, was hoping that we could start by discussing um, a very uh, important issue for both of our countries, and that is Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see as important for Ukraine, um, and uh, where should we go with um, now this developing crisis? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you for being here. It's my first time, and I'm looking forward to coming back, of course, and, and to participate in an exchange on our common interests. And I think the most urgent, the most fundamental, common interest is to find an answer to the Ukraine crisis or to put it more precise to to, to give an answer to uh, a Putin uh, 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 or to, to Putin's challenge to the West I think it is of course a European challenge because this problem uh, is taking place on our continent uh, but uh, it is a fundamental fundamental question how to govern uh, uh, our global world um, as an experience, as the historical experience result of the bloodshed of the 20th century, uh, there has emerged uh, the conviction uh, that nationalism, aggression, revanchism has led to catastrophes and we have replaced it by consensus uh, with an European peace order which is now questioned violated and challenged by Putin. And this is a fundamental question, not only for the Europeans, but for the transatlantic community. Absolutely. And we have to make clear that we do not accept the violation of this order, that we, that we engage consequently to preserve and to defend this post-war peace order. And so we have to make it clear with all diplomatic political means uh, which can be supplied. I think it is not a militarily conducted confrontation, but we should apply all political economic tools. I think we have to step, step up uh, 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 in terms of the sanctions in order to make clear that we take this case very, very seriously. Uh, I think we, there is uh, some space which we, which to, to make this much more clearer than we did mm -hmm. until now. Uh, and on the other side, uh, we have to commonly support uh, Ukraine politically and economically. There will be costs, but there will be much higher costs if we allow that international law and the peace order can be violated. Then we will have to pay a short time later a much more higher price. So it is a, the most urgent uh, challenge to the uh, transatlantic community. And at the end of the day, I'm sure we will be stronger, more united than we were before this crisis. But we have to cope with it and to be clear, decisive, united. Well, since you talk about costs, can you um, uh, talk a little bit about what Germany is doing? Um, are you stepping up? Uh, to the plate and actually um, uh, do you have plans for um, more support for the Ukraine in terms of aid, in terms of assistance? Uh, do you feel that the EU generally is uh, doing enough to try to assist the Ukraine to be able to uh, overcome some of their um, uh, monetary problems, some of their budget problems? I think we have to step up not only in rhetoric, but in action. Uh, and on both fields, uh, we, have, uh, we have this ladder of uh, sanctions. Mm -hmm. We are on the second level now. Mm -hmm. I think we have to step up to the third level because it is not enough only to, to react when Putin makes, makes the next move, mm -hmm. but we have to be clear that we anticipate his next move. And so we have to, I think, achieve and activate the third level. Mm -hmm. I would say most important is to cut off the 
access to financial markets mm -hmm. because it would have an impact uh, for the oligarchs, which have a very powerful voice and position within Russia, yes. uh, within the Putin system. And on the other side, beside the sanctions, the sanctions will not prevent Putin from going forward. I think we have to be clear about this. He wants to destabilize the whole country. He wants to avoid uh, that uh, Ukraine becomes a success, a success, a political success, uh, and a, uh, and a, uh, an economic success. Because a politically and economically successful Ukraine would be a challenge for Putin's power, and so he is uh, determined to avoid Ukraine becoming a success. And we have to make clear with the sanctions that we give a politically united answer to this challenge and we have to make clear that we that we uh, are determined to stabilize Ukraine in our own interests mm -hmm. and on solidarity and on both fields we have to engage more um, not in the way that uh, the US is is, 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 is is forcing the European part to do more and the Europeans say you are far away and you will not have to pay the cost so you have to go forward we have to do it in a united transatlantic sense, but we have to do more. It's becoming urgent to engage more. It seems to me that the sanctions then are very important, going to the, uh, going to the next level. Uh, it sounds like you are very much in support of that. Um, what about in terms of actually assistance to the Ukraine? Um, is that uh, in the cards uh, for Germany? It's the most important what we yeah. have to do. Uh, to assist, to help, uh, 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 politically and economically. Mm -hmm. And by this, we have to make clear that assistance, economic and political assistance, can only work if the Ukrainians are ready to transform their country to a transparent, democratic, political that's system. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important because right. if if Ukraine would remain a black hole, you can throw money in it, it will not work. Uh, and there have to be structural political reforms. We, uh, we, I think we have the right to, 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 to expect mm -hmm. that there uh, are st undertaken structural reforms and at the heart and the core of structural reforms has to be to fight the entrenched structural corruption uh, which we find in Ukraine and all democratic uh, parties, uh, citizens, uh, uh, societal forces and parts have to unite in fighting corruption and building up a, a transparent, democratic, a free market oriented uh, political system. And this giving and, and uh, taking has to be uh, at the heart of the agreement with the Ukraine. Yeah, I think all of us were, uh, the demonstrators in Kiev were yeah. very uh, surprised at the degree of corruption yeah. uh, that they saw when uh, the houses were opened and all. Yeah. Um, and let corruption me, let was me... what, what really motivated this this demonstrators. They mm -hmm. were fed up with this entrenched structural corruption. Yeah. And so we, we would we would really uh, uh, um, uh, enhance this, this citizen movement by, by making an agreement about assistance versus structural reforms and fighting corruption. Let me ask you uh, a, a broader question about the relationship with Putin and with Russia then as we go into the future. I mean, the idea for the U.S. of resetting the relationship obviously is out the window. Um, how would you describe Germany's, how you feel Germany should go forward in, in, uh, in the relationship with Putin and what do you anticipate from him? I mean, he seems to be doing so much that we're not, we have not anticipated. Yes. My personal assessment is that, that he's not pursuing a plan uh, which he worked out for, for months. Uh, that w that w this would not be in line with uh, the massive investment he made into the Olympic Games. That's right. It was an image campaign for Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I think it was a, a decision out of a situation. Perhaps because the Olympic Games, in, in, po in political terms, 
were, were not this uh, uh, success he, he, yeah. he aimed at. Um, and then there was a situation that for the first time in history, uh, he's, it seemed that uh, Putin and Russia totally lost uh, influence uh, about Ukraine because there was this uh, successful Maidan uh, movement and they ousted uh, or they or and Yanukovych uh, uh, went out of the country mm -hmm. so with, with Yanukovych fleeing the country uh, Putin lost uh, totally control about Ukraine and this challenged him very much because this seemed that the democratic mo democratic movement could change the country and make Ukraine a success uh, in comparison with Russia, yes. So this brought him in uh, the country, and and uh, decided him to to leave the consensus of this peace order. So I do not see uh, that Putin is leaving this course. We mm -hmm. have to be clear about it. Mm -hmm. So we have to to defend um, uh, this order and to stabilize Ukraine, but we should not give up Russia the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think Russia... Does Germany have a special role? No, we do not have a special role. I think it would be would be a, a false political stance and positioning of Germany to, to claim a special role towards Russia. Mm -hmm. We are part of Europe, we are part of the West. We have, we have a special responsibility, I would say, mm -hmm. and very much depends on Germany on our decisiveness uh, to, to take a lead, I would say. We are not striving at this, but it is the situation. Uh, and as, as a speaker, perhaps, for, for, uh -huh. for Europe in this uh, field, uh, we should make clear that we want Russia to be a part of a security and peace order in Russia. But that Russia, right now, with Putin, Putin leading Russia, is is disintegrating and isolating Russia for itself. We are open uh, with every political and diplomatic means. We want this partnership, but Putin has left the partnership, uh, and we have to react to this. Yes. Well, I uh, thank you very much for your um, willingness to come and talk with us. Thank you. I and uh, AICGS um, appreciates your your remarks and. We look forward to working with you then in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much.